Welcome to Pixel Composer 1.19.4. This version introduced a box. So before we begin with what's new in this version, there's some some problem in the previous version in the previous 1.19.3. If you try to load a project with composite node from the 1.19.3 version into this version and above, there's gonna be some problems. Mainly the anchor may be set to 0.0. zero. zero. So if you have that problem, you load the older projects and it have this kind of problem if it render incorrectly, you just have to reset the anchor point back to 0.5.5. Anyway, uh, let's talk about new feature in this version. So first we have a blend height node. This is a node that used for blending a height map. Normally when you use blend node, you're gonna have a set of blend mode like that. Adding, maximum or subtraction or stuff like that. And with blend height, you're gonna have more options, more different blend mode and different blend equation that you can apply. Then we have the new scatter point 3D node. We already have the scatter point node, right? And technically, it's also have the 3D option. But what it does, it just it's just gonna add the third dimension. Just gonna add the third value for each point. So I create a new node specifically just for scatter point in 3Ds, which is called scatter point 3Ds. And because it's a 3D node, when you previewing it, it's gonna show you in 3D view like this that you can see clearly. And on the topic of scattering point, there are also two extra nodes. First is lattice point, which will generate points based on a lattice or like in a grid form. You can set control the number of subdivision and it will generate point on each of these grid intersection. And on the same concept, we also have lattice point 3Ds. It's gonna scatter point or generate point along this 3D grid. Then we have this, this new 3D point camera node. This node is a node that will take in a 3D point and then project it onto the 3D camera and we return a 2D point. Now it will show you as a 3D values, but the third value is just the depth or the distance from the camera. So you can use this in other node, like a scatter node, for example. Then we have the new part, revolve node. You have a 2D part like this, and it will basically rotate the part along the origin point to create a 3D object. Useful to create a cylindrical shapes, like a glass in the example. And on the topic of editing part, there's also a new option to add new anchor from the origin. So normally we use the anchor add to and you click on anywhere, it's just gonna continue from the end of the part, right? If you hold all key while clicking on it, you see that it will now add new anchor from the origin of the part. And next we have up new part flatter node. I have this node set up. So this node will flatten a series of compound parts into one single part. So basically when you have a compound part that are created either from part combined node or with a node like the repeat part node, each of the segment will be independent from each other. In the example, when I control the trim part, you will see that each of the segments are independent from each other, right? So it got trimmed independently. And when you connect it to like the fill part, it's not gonna fill correctly. So you can use the new part flatten node. So this will just flatten all the compound part into one object. So now, when you try to use trim part again, you will see that every single repetition of the original part are now one single object connected. The word is connected. That's what I'm trying to say. It connect a compound part into one single part. Then the camera node, the 3D camera node, also got a new view normal output. So this is different from the normal. The normal output here output a world normal, but this is the view normal. So it's a normal vectors of an object dependent on the view of the camera, right? Which you can use it as like a normal map in other node. Like in this example, use it in normal light. There are also an improvement on the particle ground setting. So in the older version, the ground property is based on the relative position of the particle. But now there's more option to control where the ground level could be. There's also an improvement on the shuffle node algorithm. Then we have an improvement on the user interface. So when you create new frames with Shift F, it will now select the frame name by default. So you can just type a new name. There are new vertical tab setting for the panels. But if you like right click, you can now set different tab alignment to be in the bottom to the left or the right. The node panel down here is quite an underutilized panel. In the older version, it's just gonna list all the nodes in your project, but now the node will be shown in a hierarchical order. So it will show you the relationship of the different nodes. When you add blending, you're gonna see now that it add two nodes together and stuff like that. There's also a sidebar that allows you to quickly add new nodes and you can also edit it to have any other button you want. The color selector also got a new mixed color tools so when you're selecting any colors, you can go to do your preset and then right click and then you can select mix color which will allow you to blend between your current color and the color that you select. And there's now a new file browser for Pixel Composer. 
Now this is uh, disabled by default because there's still some bugs and it's quite slow. The, the goal of this file explorer is actually to be used with a port to other operating system. It wasn't intended to be used with Windows operating system, but you can turn it on. To enable it, you can go to preference and then in the interface, there will be this option called use native file selector. And if you disable this, it will now use Pixel Composer new file selector. Again, it's still quite buggy, I think, and it's also really slow on startup too. I'm not sure what's going on there. I would still recommend if you're on Windows and just use the, the default file selector. But one feature that it does have is the ability to load thumbnail of a Peter Composer project file. This is something that I have been trying to do on the default file explorer to have it show the thumbnail instead of like nothing. But I'm not sure how to do that, to be honest. I actually don't know how to do that. I've been searching around. It seemed to be a really complicated process. So now that I have created my own file selector, I just implement the feature to load in thumbnail automatically. But that's like the only reason why you want to use the, the custom file selector there. And as usual, there's a series of bug fix in this version. I'm showing you on the screen right now. So you may already notice that on each I.O. there'll be option to download the, the the beta or like the alpha version of the Linux port is really broken at the moment. I would not recommend anyone to use it. It's still in other development, but it's just another attempt of trying to port Visual Composer to, to other operating system. Uh, I think for Linux user, the, the, the best choice, the most functional way to use Visual Composer on Linux is still Proton. I don't know what wizardry they've been doing over there, but like it just works way better than me trying to port it myself, even though I have all the source code in there. I don't understand, man. Anyway. <laughs> I will be continue working on the port. Of course, if the Linux port is working, then I think that the port to Mac will also be easy as well, except the notarization process. But that's just another topic altogether. That will be it for today's video. So thank you everyone for watching. Special thanks for Patreon supporter. And see you in the next one.